Alright, 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 alright. What is good, everybody? Just doing some checking in with everyone right quick. Feeling good. It's a nice day down here in the South, down here in Nashville, Tennessee. And I just want to go down memory lane right quick with y'all, especially if you are from Chicago. I'm going to be talking about what it was like growing up in, in the Chicago housing projects. Woo, what it was like. So give me a moment and I shall return. I am your host, Donald Briscoe, right here. Welcome to the Back and Forth. Let's go. Right, all right, all right. Welcome back. I'm here to just chop it up with everybody right quick on a little something. Nothing too major. I just felt like reminiscing on what it was like for me growing up in the Chicago housing projects. For those who don't know, it's CHA, Chicago Housing Authority. If you're in Chicago or from Chicago, you already know. Now, the projects were tore down, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them were tore down. Like that process started in like the early 90s to mid 90s, all the way up to like the mid 2000s, maybe like to like the 2010s. And of course, the notorious ones like Cabrini Green, Robert Taylor Holmes. Rockwell Gardens. A lot of those places are just gone. Stateway Gardens, which I'm glad are fucking gone. Excuse me. But my childhood is filled with a lot of great memories growing up and some of those Chicago housing projects. Only one that I lived in that I really can't stand, and that's Stateway Gardens. And I'll get back to why I can't stand that place. But right now, I'm going to talk about the Robert Taylor Homes, the Raymond Hillier Homes, and Altgill Gardens. Now, I grew up on the south side of Chicago, on the low end. All right, and the first housing project that I have lived in and got memories of was living in the Robert Taylor homes. And I went to Beethoven grade school for kindergarten. And I lived in 4950. Uh, That building was called Vulture City in the 90s. But in the 70s, um, I was just a kid. I lived in 4950 South State. I don't know if it was federal, but I think it was just South State. Fed- and I want I got my guess something to say about those streets too. But I grew up 4950 South State. I hope I got that right. And I lived on the 11th floor, and I believe it was apartment 1106. And man, I got some memories. You know, I remember there was a guy that lived in 1101. His name was Demetrius. His mother and my mother were real cool. And me and him were, we were cool, but we had like an off and on friendship, but we were cool every now and then. But I don't know what happened, but me and him had like a little beef this one period. And my mother sent me down to his house to get something. I forget what it was. But when I walked in the door, he was in the kitchen cooking some eggs on the stove. Now, if you're familiar with the way Robert Taylor apartments are set up, that old one apartment 
It's like as soon as you walk in the unit, you're in the kitchen. And to your right, the stove is right there. That's the first thing on the right is when you walk in the kitchen. And so he was right there cooking some eggs, scrambling some eggs with a fork. I walked in and he saw me walk in. And the first thing he did was burn me on the neck with that fork he was scrambling those eggs with. And that left like a mark on my neck. Oh, boy, I was pissed off as a kid. I was mad, big mad. And it was on. Now, what happened after that? I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, my mother, I went, I remember running back to my house. My mother, you know, fixed me up and she went down to his mother's house, you know, went down to their crib, spoke to his mom. And I, you know, everything was squashed after that. But I said, when I got older, I said, if I ever see that kid, it was on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but those were like some of my earliest memories of living in 4950. I remember, like I said earlier, going to Beethoven High uh, grade school. Right across the street was DuSable High School. Uh, my parents went there. Um, and the one thing I loved about that, that experience was one side of my family, my father, my stepfather's side of the family, all right, were the Mitchells. If anyone lived in the Robert Taylors, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you remember the Mitchells that lived in 4845 South Federal, apartment 901. They were a big family. They was my family. And man, I got so many memories hanging out with them. I remember cleaning up the stairwells on Saturday mornings with my Uncle Fred or my Uncle Darren. Rest in peace to him. Whew. Wow, man. Used to go over there in the summertime and on the weekends. And I never would want to go home. Wake up Saturday morning watching... The super friends, I was always the first one up, so I'll be the first one up, turn on the television. I remember plenty of late nights, we would be up watching Three Stooges, <laughs> Mary Hartman, The Little Rascals, Benny Hill most definitely watched a lot of Benny Hill. And they used to like, you know, when we meet, my sister went over there. They used to like fry up french fries all the time. They used to like hand peel these french fries, man. Damn, these memories are just awesome, man. Yeah, man. So check this out. I'm going to get into some footage. I'm going to show a clip of my homeboy, hip-hop Chicago legend, D.A. Smart. He also lived in 4950. And this is a clip of him walking you through Vulture City, a.k.a. 4950 South State. Check this out. Cynthia Prince here, and I'm at the Robert Taylor Homes, and I'm going to be speaking with DA Smart. And he's this footage is grimy as hell, too, so check it out. And his neighborhood, and tell us a little bit about where he comes from. What's up? What's up? What's up? As y'all can see, you are now in Vulture City. <laughs> this is the hood where it's all good. This is where DA Smart, the Black Terror, grew up for like 14 years. You understand? Early so it's footage. all good. Now I'm gonna give you a footage. tour through the Robert Taylor homes. You understand? One of the most infamous projects in Chicago. All right, we're gonna roll this way, right? Yeah, see these, these folks over here, GDs, you know, they run it over here. You know what I'm saying? The folks, they run it. Yeah, so this is the hood. This building is called 4950 South State. That's where you at. All right. Now we're going to walk over here. You got Miss Rose. She sell candy. Church lady. She, she sell candy all the time out of her van or her station wagon. You know what I'm saying? This is my little soldier right here. His name Randy. He's my uh, first officer. Come here, Randy. Front and center, soldier. This is my soldier. We started a little organization over here called Boy. B O I. It's called Boys of Islam. You know, just for an example, you know, I'm teaching them knowledge of self, knowledge of others, and, and knowledge of, get your little game banging ass on, and knowledge of other people, all right? Now, who's the original man? 
the original man is the Asia, the black man, the maker, the only, the cream of the planet, the God of the universe. So he he know what, that's just a little example of what I'm doing over here in the Robert Taylor. You know what I'm saying? All right, come on this way. All right, here we go, here we go. Now, this is the cage Taylor. You know what I'm saying? I'm taking you through the Taylor where it's locked down and made secure. You know what I'm saying? So it's all good. You can make it through. You can make it through. Okay. All right. We'll be right back after these messages. Ah! <laughs> Breezeway of the Robert Taylor. It's a couple of folks, you know, they be, they be chilling down here. You know, that's, that's their business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is the elevator. You know what I'm saying? One has always been broke. You know, a lot of frustration. You know, we only got one elevator at work, so we'll be bumping into each other. You know, they did it. Project is another word for experiment. You know what I'm saying? They did an experiment with rats, and they put them in this, this building. And then rats multiply so much that they start killing each other. So there's so many people multiplying in the projects and stuff like that that we killing each other. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. That was my brother checking them from walking in front of the video. You know, we all good. Yeah. And out here is, this is what is considered the front of the Robert Taylor. You know what I'm saying? Out here is where you have your play, playground, your swings. But if you notice, it ain't no swings on there. And it ain't no, you know, we ain't got no rubber top or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? For the children to play. So we playing on straight concrete. So if we fall, we just bust it up. You know what I'm saying? They don't give a damn. You know, we ain't got no swings. They ain't fixed them swings in like eight years. You know what I'm saying? They been like that. They ain't painted. They ain't renovated the projects or nothing. This is Robert Taylor I'm speaking of because that's where, you know, most of my experience have been in the Robert Taylor. Now, this is my building right here. It's 4950 South State. This is where D.A. Smart, the Black Terror, come from. You know what I'm saying? Been raised, you know, slay suckers, whoop brothers. You know, just to come up. I ain't never gang bang or nothing like that. Or I never sold any drugs or nothing like that. So everybody in the, in the community know that D.A. Smart is a positive aspect of this. So this is Robert Taylor. This is D.A. Smart. We all good. Letting y'all know what time it is. Peace. I'm from the middle of the map now, baby. I'm all right. That's just a taste of where I'm from. All right, now I don't know if this is 4950, but this is just how the the the, the city just forgot about people. This is the conditions that I grew up in. Seeing stuff like this every day can condition some of us. It can either make us feel like, hey, I've got to do something for my family to get us up out of here. Even as a kid, you would feel that way. Some of us. And then some of us, we just assimilate and we just fall right on there and become actually a product of that environment. We all are to some extent. But a lot of us use that as inspiration and motivation to get the hell up out. All right. Living in these projects, as I got older and looking back, showed me, even though I was sitting in the news and hear other adults talk about it, as a kid, it never soaked in because I was just having fun. It was home. But looking back in retrospect, they didn't give a damn about us. Look at that. Look at that right there. The funding just fell apart. The maintenance fell apart. Doing things for the community just fell apart. The community itself fell apart. Can you imagine going home to this every day? I had to. 4850, I mean 4950 and 4845 were the buildings that I were most associated with. Those are the buildings that I have the most memories with. I remember hanging out in 5100 because my stepfather ended up having an apartment down there. And my other cousins lived across the street in the in the yellow buildings. Um, I forget the address of those, but there's the 
Yellow Building is right across the street from 5100 facing Ali's restaurant. If you're old school from Chicago, you know exactly what I'm talking about in that area, right on 51st Street. All right. That's what I came up in. That's where DA Smart comes from. And shouts out to that brother. Very positive, uplifting, motivating brother. More than just a hip hop legend. He's a good brother. He is one of Chicago's finest off the top. And look where we come from. Now, I know if you're watching this, you may be from Philly, New York. You can relate to what I'm saying. I've seen a lot of you all in the news as well. Living in these projects, man. I got good memories. But I also got some crazy memories. I remember hearing gunshots. Bah, 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 bah. A lot. I remember my uncles and them being Black P Stones and Mickey Culver's. Those were the gangs in that particular building. And I remember them trying to, you know, get me to do that as a kid. As a kid, I remember them saying, say Mickey Culver, say Black P Stones, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Robert Taylor, man. The memories, man. For a lot of people, it was hell. I, I know it was. But a lot of my family was there. I could go to the building that faced right in front of 4950. I don't know exactly what the number is to that building, but it's the one that faces right in front of 4950. My family, Miss Sappho, uh, my, my grandma Sappho, lived on the second floor, 203. And my cousin Triz had a room over there. You know what I'm saying? Now, they lived in a hill down on 22nd Street, but Triz had a room down here at Grandma Sappho's house. S-A-F-O, the Sappho's. Man, what? <laughs> I used to love going over there, man. Triz's room, my cousin Triz, rest in peace. I love you. You know, grandmamas always usually have their favorite grandchild, and I think she was hers. Triz, that room was fly. It was fly. Fly and fly. You know, I'm a kid. I'm amazed that she had a a movie projector in her room. She had this Snoopy ice cream snow, that snow cone maker. You know the popular one that was out in the 70s? She had that. She had the joints with the the the, the, the projector, you know, the, the things you slap the reels in, the 3D projector. Man, my cousin had all kind of cool toys. In these projects. I got a clip I want to show. This is from a 1982 documentary. It's just a short piece of it. It was like a 10-part series. What is, the, what is broken down into 10 parts? I'm not going to say a series, but it's broken down into 10 parts. But this particular part is what got my attention about growing up in Robert Taylor. A Check rough this out. period and a leg into the working society, public aid became a way of life for three generations of the Nash family. Mrs. Nash, her youngest son and granddaughter, receive aid to families with dependent children, AFDC, the check most people think of as welfare. Four daughters and their children, more AFDC. Four sons and one daughter, general assistance checks, a state of Illinois program. Their children are supported by AFDC. So are the children of Willie and Kenny Nash, although their fathers now have jobs. Hiawatha Nash, age 33, receives aid to the blind, aged, and disabled because of her crippling birth defect. So that's Mrs. Nash, 11 children, and 26 grandchildren. We're spending $3,965 a month cash to sustain the 38 members of the Nash family, plus wow. about $2,500 in food stamp benefits, a cost that tallies wow. up to over $78,000 a year, or about $2,067 per person per year. 10, 
order for 338. 338 dollars. 338? Uh-huh. All but two dollars of Mrs. Nash's AFDC check goes to the housing authority for rent. That's 33970. If for some reason family income goes up, so does the rent, up to 30 percent of adjusted family income. There's barely enough money for the basic nutritional necessities. Just about everything I buy most, of, I buy by the case. I buy my meal by the case, my flour, my sugar. I buy tomato paste by the case. I buy ketchup by the case. I buy uh, chicken by the case, neck bone by the case. I buy a lot of I buy a lot of beans, which my children always say, "Mama, we tired of eating beans. We don't want to eat beans." You know. I wasn't looking to be on eight long as I am now. You know. What is it about life on Federal Street that immobilizes its residents, keeps them trapped in this dangerous and frightening place? For 13 years, this has been the home of the Nash family. I didn't want to move in CHA, but I didn't have no other choice. Because, you know, like, uh, nowadays people don't want to take you if you got a lot of kids. And it's been kind of rough. Housing like this went up in major cities across the country, a legacy of the Housing Act of 1949, which ordered slums cleared and replaced with modern buildings that would meet the goal of a decent home and a suitable living environment for every American family. Robert Taylor Homes was the largest, most ambitious housing project in the world. $75 million, 28 buildings, 16 stories high, 4,415 apartments stretching over 95 acres. The opening ceremony was a celebration of pride. The first families moved in with high expectations. Now, 24 years later, the reality is very different from the concept. It's really not safe here, you know. And I used to always say all the time when I used to see on TV before I moved in the project that I would never move in the project. But the other buildings where we stayed at, they got condemned, the water was cut off, we didn't have no way to flush the toilet. We had to borrow water from other people that, you know, homeowners. And the people got tired of, you know, giving us water. And uh, the lady uh, from the Urban Progress Center came out and asked us what we'd like to move. And we told him, yeah, so that's when we got a chance to move in, in CHA. Three generations of the Nash family, 15 people, live in this six-room apartment on the fifth floor. I really want to move away from my mother because I know my mother tired of us living with her. I know my mother want to be home be on her own. I've been trying ever since my little girl was one, and she's seven, she'll be eight in August. Gloria, angel to her family, and her sister Sheila have asked the Chicago Housing Authority for apartments so that they and their children can move out. If you get burnt out, they'll probably give you another apartment or something like that. But you know, like, it's too many people in this apartment. Having the grandchildren underfoot aggravates her high blood pressure. But my nerves sometimes it be more worse to like than the other time. You know, with all this pressure on me and everything. See, you know, like the doctor gave me like leave them, leave them, whatever you call them. And they have gave me like uh, the yellow nerve pill, they call them Valium 10. All different kind of medicine. And some of it I don't even know what it's for and I don't even take it. The people living on top of one another. And there's always a lot of chaos. There's always a um, high tension growing. Dwight is the eldest of the Nash sons who grew up here. It's not safe for a family of four or even two, for that matter, to be living in Robert Taylor because anything is subject to happen. Sometimes the elevators don't work. Sometimes the emergency squad can't get in in time enough to save one's life. Problems must be taken to the housing authority, and the solutions must meet a... Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You see that? That was real.
this is what they would celebrate when they first opened up. Um, the Robert Taylor homes were built in 1962. So that footage was just 20 years after. All right. That footage was just 20 years after those buildings went up. Now, how many buildings have you seen that was built in the 1930s, 1940s, but they still look pristine, they still look clean, you still need security to get in. You can't just, you know, you can't, you can't just walk in off the street. The city knows what they want to put the money behind and what they just don't want to put the money behind. They built these buildings, filled them up with people, and then left them there. My dad used to tell me all the stories about when they first went up and how clean they were, how the neighbors, I mean, it was no gangs, it was nothing. But they say in the documentary, I watched it recently, by 1964, the Black Peace Stones and the Mickey Cobras had already took over the Robert Taylors. Already. Gang violence, drug activity was popping already. In 1982, I was just 11 years old. And I was having fun, fun, fun. Also in 1982, I lived in Stateway Gardens. By this time, I was just coming down to the Robert Taylors at 4845 to hang out with my family on the summertime and on the weekends. And I hated Stateway Gardens. We moved in there in late 81, maybe October, November 81. And we left February 28, 1983. So that little time span we spent there, I couldn't stand it. If anyone remember how Stateway Gardens were, and I'm not shitting on anyone who, who's from there who has loving memories of Stateway, but I'm just making the comparison. Because this lady in nineteen in this eighty in this clip from nineteen eighty two was catching hell, but those kids was living it up, like I was. But also at the same time, I was a kid living in Stateway Gardens, and I hated it. But some of those kids called it home; and they loved it. So that there was that contrast there. One project I loved, and another one I couldn't fucking stand, and that was the one I lived in. It was like from day one, we were cursed. People stole my jacket. They were banging on our windows. When we first moved in there, our kitchen window was still boarded up. They hadn't even put a window yet in there yet. So it was like boarded up. So the kids was banging on the window and running and shit like that. My sister broke her arm down there. Uh, it got cold. I think it was the winter of 82. It got really, really cold. And the pipes froze so about three, four days, almost to a week. We didn't have running water. Yeah. Yeah. Then it was like a bad breakout of maggots. So bad that the news came. Because Stayway Gardens was just horrible. And then something tragic happened to us where we just had to be like, okay, this is it. My mother said, fuck this. We gone. And when I got wind that they was tearing them down and then they were finally tore down I celebrated that shit now every year in Chicago um, black people who lived in those projects they get together in, in the parks in the city and have like this these reunions like the Robert Taylor reunion Cabrini Green you know what I'm saying all the buildings that were tore down people still come together and, re and unite every year and Stateway be there too and I'm not tripping on them it's just that my memories of Stateway were fucking hell Versus my memories of living in the hill on 22nd and straight. 2031 South State. I mean, South Clark. I'm sorry. Let me get this right. 2031 South Clark. Even though they were right off State Street. And I want to say this right quick, too. Now. From 22nd and State Street, where the icky started. Maybe 20 something like that anyway where the Iggy started going all the way up to 
53rd, 54th, down to the hole where the last few buildings of the Robert Taylor were. Those were all buildings and projects. So you had the Ickies, you had the Dearborn, you had Stateway Gardens, you had Robert Taylor. Four different housing projects that went along State Street. Even though the the, um, the the hill did, the Raymond Hilliard did, the address wasn't considered state. The address was Clark Street, 2030 Clark Street, 2030 Clark Street, and 2031 South Clark. I believe 2030, I think 2030 was Clark Street, even though that was the building closest to State Street. Anyways, when you look at the mind fuck they had you in, if you lived in the Ickies, the Dearborns, Stayway Gardens, and Robert Taylor. Guess what streets you were sandwiched in between? Listen at this. Listen at this mind fuck they did us in. If you lived in the Ickies, the Dearborns, Stayway Gardens, and Robert Taylor, along State Street, and then the back street was Federal. You lived between State and Federal. I'm going to let you let that soak in right quick. Uh-huh. A fucking mind bomb. I was sitting chilling one day. And I was like, okay, 4950 South State. Then we lived in, my family lived in 4845 South Federal. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. One building, wait a minute. <laughs> They had a sandwich in between state and federal. Goodness gracious. I just wanted to drop that on y'all right quick. Now, living in the hill was different. Those are the buildings that like had that half-shaped, moon shape. I didn't pull up any uh, pictures right quick. I, I could have did, but I just wanted to, I wanted to talk about and focus on those two right there. But the, I mean, Robert Taylor. But at the same time, the hill was really nice. It was gang infested. It was drugs being sold. And I was in those projects to my back and forth anyways, back and forth all the way up into my early 20s. So this is how I had it. I was going between Robert Taylor, Allgill Gardens, and the Raymond Hilliard projects. In my late teens, mid to late teens all up to my early 20s i had fun all of my best friends my day ones are from augio gardens and the raymond hillier projects now i did live for a short while off the uh in the towers in of lake park and there was like these handful of projects right off 43rd street right behind one stop if, and again if you're familiar with the way chicago is and you know where one stop is on 43rd you remember those projects that was there i lived in that very first building that faced jackie robinson grade school because i went there in the first grade i went to jackie robinson in the first grade and we lived on the 13th floor we lived in apartment 1302 with my aunt audrey and those were fun. That that little short time was fun as hell. The only thing I remember that was kind of crazy was I had a friend named Lil Ricky. And we were playing sword fight with old school TV rabbit ear antennas. And it was close to Christmas time. And I remember this night because the cartoon towards the night before Christmas was on. So it was Christmas time. And we were like playing with the little swords, having like a little sword fight. And he jabbed me in the eye. It was an accident, but he jabbed me in the eye with a TV antenna. So I had to be rushed to the hospital. And I remember going to <laughs> school a few days after that with this big patch on my eye. And I had a crush on this girl named Kim Riddle. Man, she was cute. Look, and she was like a, she had like this little Asian look to her. She was so gorgeous, man. And I remember in first grade sitting there in Miss Pierce. My first grade teacher was Miss Pierce at Jackie Robinson, 1976, 1977, somewhere around that. 77, 70, 76, 77, or 77, 78. Because then after that, I got transferred to Carter. Um, 
Yeah, man. If anybody remember those projects by 43rd, right behind One Stop, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I lived in there for like maybe a year and a half, maybe close to two years as a kid. I know it seems like I'm all over the place, but it's just these memories. They just they're just coming up now because I'm talking about this. It's just wow, man. You see those conditions on that clip from that 82 documentary? You see the money that they was making off welfare? They that that one family pulled in a total between all of them collecting welfare together. They were pulling in $78,000 a year. Now, I'm not finna trip when I say this, but I have to put this on the table. They didn't have to stay in those conditions for too long. If they didn't really had the mindset to pull themselves together and pull their money together, they could have got it out of there. I think they were afraid of going somewhere else and having to deal with credit check, background checks, all of y'all wouldn't be able to move in a, a, in a decent neighborhoods. You know, you see what I'm saying? This is 1982. So they were probably faced with things like maybe paying. They probably didn't want to pay more, no more than they were already paying in that project building. In 1982, a five bedroom unit and the Robert Taylors, I don't know how much, it was probably maybe a couple hundred, maybe 300 some dollars. And 15 people lived in that place. Wow. And I remember being there like that in 48, 45, and 901 with the Mitchells. It was my grandmother, my cousin, Renee, my aunts, Squeaky, and... Okay, Squeaky, and... Okay, hold on. Let me make sure I get this right. Uh, And Charlie. Charlie was there, too. My, my auntie, Charlie. Then it was... My uncle, now that's five already. That's five already. Then it was in the in the other rooms, it was my uncle Fred, my uncle Darren. Then in the other room was my uncle Jojo and my uncle either Percy or Ricky. I think they was like fluctuating back and forth. Anyways, and then us, me and Tasha coming over there, my sister Tasha. Shit, it was more than 10 people in the apartment. Easy. But no one starved. Everybody ate. I remember they had, <laughs> my grandmother had that old school ass rolling washing machine that you roll the clothes in with between the two rolling pins. Yeah, that was 70s growing up in that. I remember there used to be a grocery store on the corner of 47 Estate called Brother Five. It was a Arab store. First of the month, man, what? We was over there shopping like crazy. Across the street was a currency exchange where when you got your stamps or when, you know, you go, you know, you went over there and cashed your stamps out. And then you went shopping. And I remember one time my uncle's, no, I ain't going to say that. I ain't going to even put that out there. <laughs> but they used to take me on some crazy hood shit. You know, the game room on the, on right there next to the ex currency exchange called the green room. And they had all the ladies arcade games. And I fell in love with pole position. Miss Pac-Man up in there. I didn't remember hearing about people getting killed a lot. I remember a lot of gang fights and a lot of shooting and stuff. But I didn't remember hearing about people getting killed. Maybe they protected me from that. Or I just don't remember. But as a kid, I had fun in those fucked up conditions. I remember when in the summertime, especially in the summertime, when the lights had, it was on a timer. And they used to come on around about 6 or 6.30. And as soon as the lights come on, everyone in the project, you can hear everyone in the buildings go, yeah. What that was about, I don't know. I used to think there was a magician. They used to do some magic and turn the lights on. This is my young mind. You know what I'm saying? Eight, nine years old. I remember that. I will be on the porch playing. And as soon as the lights came on in the buildings, everybody was like, yay! Damn those memories, boy. Damn those memories, boy.
It wasn't easy growing up, though. If you were an adult, I'm sure. And again, I'm pretty sure a lot of kids that grew up in the Robert Taylors, that grew up in the Hill, that grew up in All Gill Gardens. All Gill Gardens was the shit for me. We moved there in February, on February 28th, 1983. I'm never going to forget that day. And I was there till 88. I left home in 88 when I was 17. My mother then was still there till about around about 90. But man, All Gill Gardens in the 80s was tops. I lived in Block 17, close to the Golden Gate community, which was a uh, subdivision of houses and stuff. Across the street from a Catholic school, I went to Aldridge Elementary. Then when I went to high school, I went to Carver High. There was a Carver Elementary in that same community. Man, the gardens was popping. In, 80, in the 80s, that's when I started rapping, getting into hip-hop. I discovered WHPK living out there. I had and got so many memories, man. Now, it was out there that I started experiencing people getting killed. I remember my homeboy Reed got killed out there. A lot of people I know, a lot of names out there. There was another guy that used to cut hair. His name was Dollar Bill. He got killed. They found him behind our high school. People thought it was me. My dad's phone was blown up. I was staying at my dad's house for the summer that, that year. And people was calling my crib. And my homeboy, Ronnell, actually came down there to, to see if I was okay. Shouts out to Ronnell Smith. It was in the all Gardens when I started experiencing. Because I was in my teens. So I was experiencing teen stuff then. So gang life. I used to be affiliated with some of them vice lords. But I, a lot of my friends were gangster disciples. So uh, yes, yeah, so there was a lot. I experienced a lot of gang rivalry. Friends getting killed because of that. But the guards were somewhat kept, well, well kept. They was somewhat okay. They wasn't like where we came from, but they wasn't like state way. I fucking can't stand them projects. There wasn't nothing like them. They were kind of decent and clean in the eighties. My best friend, Anton Watley, till this day, my homeboy. I've been knowing this guy 30, no, 40 years this year. At the end of this month, on the 28th, would mark 40 years when I moved in All Gill Gardens. I've been knowing that guy 40 years. Him, my boy Daryl, and his brother Kenny, 40 years. But those are my best friends. Out in Block 7, my boy Keith and Ronnie and their brother Marcel. My boy Yo-Yo and Chris and his little brother. All my 40-year friends now. Going on 40, 40 years. This year's going to mark 40 years. Who cares about my memories of the projects? Who cares? But I do. I just wanted to share this stuff, man. These are some of the greatest memories of my life. They tore down Cabrini Green. Now, if anyone remembers, Cabrini Green was one of the most notorious housing projects in the United States. They were so bad that Mayor Jane Byrne Moved in the projects. Looked that up. She stayed there for about three weeks. Maybe two weeks. Maybe three weeks. I don't think it added up to a whole month. But of course, when she was there, the crime died down. They made it right. They made it great for her to move in. But they didn't do that for the tenants who were living there prior to her moving in. And then they didn't do that. And they stopped doing that after she moved out. Those projects were real. I didn't live in them. I got a friend that grew up in them. 
my homeboy Diamond Z, I met when I joined the magazine crew. He's my connection to them. So I got a chance to go down there in the early 90s, mid 90s, when I went back to Chicago and hung out with him. When he took me down there because he still had family there. In the original ones, the row houses, and check this out a little information. If you watch the movie Cooley High, the apartment that Preacher lived in, in the bedroom that Preacher and the, and, the, and the young lady got it on in, that was my homeboy's apartment. My boy Diamond Z, that was their apartment. But I remember hearing the stories about how Cabrini, I remember these stories, 80, 81. Ooh, Cabrini was off the chain, boy. I, used, I, I remember imagining what it was like. Just hearing off the news, I remember being on my grandmother's house and just picturing in my head what it, what it was like down there. The gang violence was so through the roof. They got Mickey, they had Mickey Corbus down there too. My boy was a GD, so they had folks and, and Moe's down there. Yo, man. Robert Taylor, though. The Hill. And All Gale Gardens. Those are the housing projects that made me what I am today. Those are the housing projects that made me street savvy. They gave me the street smart and the street knowledge. And then just hanging out and living on the low end. When I wasn't living in the projects, I was still living on the low end, 43rd and Langley. My brothers from over there, and I love them. They lived right up the street in Ida B. Wells. My dad used to date a young a lady that lived in Ida B. Wells in the 90s. And I lived on 43rd and Langley. So I used to walk up Cottage Grove to Ida B. Wells and just walked in them. Now, my Aunt Pokey, she used to live in those projects years ago, 80s, late 70s, 80s. And she lived in one of those high rises on the first floor. That's the first time I ever knew anyone who lived in a first floor unit in the projects. I always thought that was wild. Who would want to live on the very first floor in the high rise project building? But hey, 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 my aunt did. Because usually those units be used for like the lunch program, office, administrative stuff. You, you see what I'm saying? Not units, but people actually lived in some of those because they had them like that in the hill. But my aunt Pokey lived in a, a first floor unit in Ida B. Wells. And that was fun as hell. My dad used to coach a softball team over there. So in the 90s when I grew up, I was just familiar with that area. And he and uh, my dad's ex-girlfriend at that time, my, my dad's girlfriend at that time, I'm sorry, in the 90s, lived right up the street from me. So I remember the night the Bulls won their first championship when they beat the Lakers. I was hanging out in Ida B. Wells. Dangerous projects. For real, though. But I didn't feel that danger because I just felt at home. And I remember walking home up Cottage Grove that night and everybody honking their horns. The city bus, I mean, the city bus was full of people hanging out the windows. Yeah, man. And then also there was another set of projects right there where I lived at on 40, between 44th and 46th in Cottage Grove. These, uh, they were, they look like the Robert Taylors. They just had another name, but it was like the yellow buildings. They looked like these. Right on 44th, 45th, and 46th and Cottage. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. I've been around projects all my life up there in the city, man. I got down here. I don't live in the projects here in Tennessee, but I've been in them. They don't have high rises down here. They have row houses. So it all, it, it all looks like all Gale Gardens and Princeton Park down here. But all those projects, LeClaire Courts, the Abla homes, the Lathrop homes, West Side, South Side, all gone. 
Augeo Garden still up. The hill is still up. Handful of other ones they just redeveloping. But the mass majority of them are gone. So I had my memories at an early age and my experiences at an early age. I grew to love the Robert Taylor Homes. I grew to love that community, man. I grew to love the Raymond Hillier Homes. I grew to love Augeo Gardens. I grew to hate Stateway Gardens, though. My experience in those particular projects, I wish I never got, I wish I could just erase that from my life. We lived on a set. These buildings had 17 floors. Which is nothing because the hill had 22 floors. But what made the, the stateway so different is because we lived on the fucking 17th floor. The very top. I never lived that high before. So that was, for me, and I think we lived in unit 1702. Then they had the elevators, right? All the other housing projects were elevated. Just have elevators. Just go up to the floors, right? These damn projects had it where it's, okay, they have 17 floors, okay? They had one elevator that went to the even floors and one elevator that went to the odd floors. That was another ant for me. This, this is me checking this list off of my head as a kid. Then their stairwell had these long-ass staircases. If you're familiar with the staircases and the Robert Taylors, they wasn't that long, man. About eight steps per flight. I used to count those joints. We used to just fly down those steps. I got to stay away. It was like, damn, they're literally 17 flight steps per flight. Then it was built like a fucking elaborate maze. I hated those damn projects. I do have a handful of good memories, though. Of like the times when I would leave there to go be at my grandmother's house or my dad's house or my other family member's house. I remember when I first watched the uh, the debut of the Smurfs. I was living in Stateway. The debut of the Pac-Man cartoon. I'm telling my age now. This is 82. Um, Down there. I remember this living in Stateway Gardens. It was Halloween of 1982. It was Halloween Day, the movie Halloween was on TV, Halloween 2 was on cable, and Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, was in theaters. Now, that blew my mind as a kid living in Stateway. It was things like that that blew my mind, like the, the memories of watching TV. It wasn't like memories of hanging out with friends. I had friends, but they wasn't tight friends i don't know i can't contact them I'm, i don't even be trying to remember them or try to find them online i don't even remember like i remember a guy named andre and tony and his sister cheryl shirley shirley was cool shirley was the first girl that gave me a french kiss so i remember that in stateway i remember this girl named neek and her brother james and they had a sister named angie i remember a guy named tt he had a sister named um mimi and a sister named Jackie, they lived on the 16th floor. Uh, and a few other people, but these are people that I can't find online. I don't know their first names. I didn't, I it's like even then, I wasn't trying to even get close to them. I was just trying to assimilate and be friends enough just to fucking survive. Straight up, that's what that was for me. I didn't go downstairs and hang out and play in the playground like I did when I lived this uh in Robert Taylor's or down in the hill. When I lived the state way, I stayed my ass on the on in the bill in the in my apartment where we lived. I went down. I only have one memory of going downstairs to play one time. And when we did that, my sister broke her arm. Fucking curse. So to hell with Stateway Gardens. My goofy ass met some chick. In 1995, and she was nice looking, so I wanted to get up with her. I met her on a train, and she lived in Stayway Gardens. And my goofy ass took my ass back down there just to hang out with her. I went down there on a Friday, and I spent literally the whole weekend. And guess what? I stayed in the fucking crib. I did not leave. My boy Cedric, 
dropped us off. He picked us up and no. Yeah, this is what happened. Cedric Miller, my boy Cedric, scooped me up. We went, I think he picked us all up. I think it was me, him, and her. He was dropping us off. And he, we all go in the building. You know, we get to the unit where she lives. She lived on like on the 15th floor. In the 1502. Right? We lived in 1702. She lived in 1502. I think it was the very same building. 3617, I think, or 3615. One of those buildings. Anyways, this was like after midnight, like one in the morning. Of course, we come in. It's gang bangers hanging out. Drug dealers and shit. I hadn't been there since 83, right? Here it is, 1995. So it is 12 years later. I'm 24 years old walking in this shit. I'm scared as fuck. My boy comes, you know, we all get to the unit, we chill. He like, all right, man, I'm finna bounce. And I'm saying it to myself. And then I asked him, I'm like, bro, you gonna be okay? Man, man, I'm cool. And nothing happened to him. He ended up leaving out. But the fact that he had to go back down them fucking elevator and leave out that building and get to his car by himself in Stateway Gardens in 1995 at one in the fucking morning by himself, that was very brave. And I big him up for that shit. Thank goodness nothing happened to him. And I was praying nothing happened to him. I didn't want that to be a story. My goofy ass stayed that whole weekend with a homegirl. No, that wasn't Friday. That was a Saturday. Saturday, I spent Sunday, then we left Monday morning. I left whew, excited. We left in the morning time. The whole time we stayed there, I did not go to the store or nothing. This is the hate I had for them buildings. I took my goofy ass back in 95, but now they gone. So that's that. <sighs> Just memories, man. But shouts out to the Robert Taylor Holmes. I miss y'all. Miss them buildings. Miss hanging out in the hole with all them MCs, going down there and copping weed. It used to be right across the street from the, the bread factory on Garfield, right there on the corner of 55th. Smell that butter bacon. They smelled that shit every day. I did too when I lived around there because my grandmother lived up the street from there. But big ups to y'all, man. My memories run deep with them. Shouts out to everybody that got them joints alive and rest in peace to all those to all those who didn't make it out. A lot of lives was lost in the Robert Taylor project. Not just them, but all of these damn projects. So rest in peace and my condolences go to those families who still feel their hurt today, who lost their son in a shootout, who lost their who lost their kid to murder. The reason we left Stateway Gardens because there was a serial rapist running rampant in that motherfucker. A serial rapist was on the loose for 73 to 83 until he killed the girl. Bitch ass motherfucker Johnny Lee Evans was a serial rapist in the Stateway Gardens. Ass motherfucker. I'm about to bust a move. I just wanted to run some memories down to y'all and let y'all know. I'm from the hood. I'm from the projects and I miss them areas. And uh if I could do it again, I will. Everything except stateway. <laughs> Straight up. If you're from the Robert Taylor, you from the Chicago Projects, chime in, comment, let it be known. Like, share, subscribe, man. Do all that. Do all that for your boy. All right. I'm checking out. Peace.